So was Luke wrong when he wrote that Quirinius was governor of Syria when Jesus was born? We had two studies here. Uh, some maintain that he was not governor at that time. So we'll look at the point reference 1, and we'll go down to point 20. Oops. Go back. 20, reference 1. We want to look at... It is possible that Luke 2, 2 says something different than what we think. It is possible that Luke 2, 2 reads, This census took place before Quirinius was governor, governing Syria. This is from a very valuable book I find when objections come up, at least I get pointed in the right direction, when critics ask by Norman Geisler and Thomas Howe. So Luke has not made an error, they maintain. There are reasonable solutions to this difficulty. First, Quintilius Varus was governor of Syria from about 7 B.C. to about 4 B.C. Varus was not a trustworthy leader, a fact that was disastrously demonstrated in A.D. 9 when he lost three legions of soldiers in the Teutoburger Forest in Germany. To the contrary, Quirinius was a notable military leader who was responsible for squelching the rebellion of the Homoadonisians. Homo, Homo Adonisians in Asia Minor. I say that several times. When it came time to begin the census in about 8 or 7 BC, Augustus, Caesar Augustus, entrusted Quirinius with the delicate problem of the volatile area of Palestine, effectively superseding the authority and governorship of Varus by appointing Quirinius. Quirinius to a place of special authority in this manner. Some breaks my teeth. I'm not used to pronouncing these kinds of words. I think they mainly come from the Latin. It has also been proposed that Quirinius was governor of Syria on two separate occasions, once while prosecuting the military action against the Homan Adonisians between 12 and 2 BC, and later beginning about AD 6. A Latin inscription discovered archaeology. There you go. A Latin inscription discovered in 1764 has been interpreted to refer to Quirinius Quir Quir as having served as governor of Syria on two occasions. It is possible that Luke 2.2 reads, This census took place before Q <laughs> was governing Syria. In this case, the Greek word translated first, meaning potos, is translated as a comparative before. Because of the awkward construction of the sentence, this is not an unlikely reading, regardless of which solution is accepted. It is not necessary to conclude that Luke had made an error in recording the historical events surrounding the birth of Jesus. Luke has proven himself over and over again to be a reliable historian, even in the details. And that's the strength of his testimony, especially since he was not a disciple of Jesus, yet he accurately reported all kinds of things that Jesus said and did by believers, and he accurately reported that by um, conferring with them. Sir William Ramsey has shown that in making references to 32 countries, 54 cities, and 9 islands, he made no mistakes. Look at this Christian ChristianAnswers.net dictionary. I wonder if this is still there. Let's just double, sometimes I like to double check to see if they're still there. This gives me a, an understanding. I, I better record it anyway, just in case it changes. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yep. See, not there. So I recorded the information, even though the. Uh, even though the the reference doesn't work. So. ChristianAnswers.net, and their dictionary on Serenius. His full name was Publius, Publius, Sulpicius. Quirinius, Quirinius, you take your time, maybe it's easier to pronounce. Recent historical investigation has proved that Quirinius was governor of Cilicia, which was annexed to Syria at the time of our Lord's birth. Cilicia, which he ruled, being a province of Syria, he is called the governor, which he was de jure of Syria. 
Some, time, some ten years afterwards, he was appointed governor of Syria for the second time during his tenure of office at that time of our Lord's birth, which is Luke 2, 2, a taxing. Another is an enrollment or a registration of the people was first made, and he was made for the first time under his government. When Cyrenius, Cyrenius was governor of Syria, is simply a census of the people or an enrollment of them with a view to their taxation. The decree for the enrollment was the occasion of Joseph and Mary's going up to Bethlehem. It has been argued by some that Cyrenius was governor of Cilicia and Syria both at the same time of our Lord's birth and some years afterwards. This decree for the taxing referred to the whole Roman world and not to Judea alone. So we've got plenty of plausibility here. You can't have deniability when there's still some plausibility in turn, especially uh, archaeological discoveries. Okay, let's go back. That was point one. Reference one. Now, reference two, whether or not Quirinius was governor of Syria. I finally figured out how to do that. Here it is. Skeptics maintain that there was no census, that Luke's mention of it, and Quirinius being governor is a fabrication. This is an objection about Luke, Quirinius, and Herod. So, in the, Robin Lane Fox states in the unauthorized version, Truth and Fiction in the Bible. The difficulty begins on one small point, but spreads from it like dry rot to bring larger constructions to the ground. Now, he's, he's destroying, he thinks, the foundation of the biblical record. There, there are a lot of little uh, false, and, uh, false facts and f false figures that destroy its credibility. Why do I all of a sudden smell polemic? Would you consider dry rot a value-laden term? This is uh, his comments, Robin Fox. Quirinius, the governor of Syria, whom Luke's gospel mentions, is known from a careful history of affairs in Judea, which was compiled for Jos by Josephus, an educated Jew, writing in Greek at, at Rome between about 75 and 80 A.D. Josephus had his own prejudices and areas of interest, but he worked with a framework of hard facts which were freely available for checking and which he had collected responsibly. According to Josephus, Quirinius was governor of Syria with authority over Judea in A.D. 6 when the province was brought under direct Roman control. The year was a critical moment in history, as important to its province as the 1972 to Northern Ireland, the state of direct rule, the start of a direct rule. On such a fact, at such moment, Josephus and his sources cannot be brushed aside. There is, however, an awkward problem. Luke's gospel links Jesus' birth with, with Quirinius. And the guy, the skeptic, says, I may have a problem with the word with, but keep going. And with King Herod, but in A.D. 6, Herod had long disappeared. He had died soon after an eclipse of the moon, which is dated by astronomers to 12 to 13 March 4 B.C., although a minority of scholars have argued for 5 B.C. instead. So far, so good. The Gospel, therefore, assumes that Quirinius and King Herod were contemporaries when they were separated by 10 years or more. Now, the answer to that is, I assume you mean contemporaries in office. They were certainly contemporaries in life. Quirinius, at the time of King Herod's death, was doing military expeditions in the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire. Tacitus, Annals of 348, and Florus, Roman History, 231. So we have some archaeological and historical evidence, with some evidence indicating that he either was a co-ruler with the governor of Syria, that the somewhat inept Quintilius, Varus, which we learned in the first part we looked at, or at least placed in charge of the 14-year census in Palestine. Varus was famous for the latter fiasco of the Tudoburger Forest in Germany, 9 AD, and at his appointment as governor of Syria in 7 BC, was largely untested. The census was due in 8 to 7 BC, and Augustus could easily have ordered his trusted Quirinius, fresh from subduing the Pisidian Highlanders, to assist in the volatile project. Herod I had recently lost favor of the emperor and was probably dragging his feet on taking the census, a process which, with, with, uh, which always enraged the difficult Jews. 
This would have pushed the time frame into the 5 BC mark, which fits the general data. Now, the answer is there is no doubt about the Herod in question. When the, the great king Herod died, his king, kingdom was split between his sons, two of whom did add Herod to their names. Herod Antipas, locally in Galilee, as a tetrarch until 39. But Luke 1.5 connects the Annunciation with Herod, king of Judah. Judah. And the answer is, this is correct. The Annunciation occurred about the census point under King Herod. The references in 1.5 is correct. And so why did you use the word but? Did you think the Annunciation was under Antipas? King Herod the first was king of Judea, Judea, but was also king of Galilee. The terms would not have been understood as restrictive, king of only, before the kingdom divided. So when he, the answer is when he refers to Herod Antipas at 3.1, he correctly calls him Tetrarch, not king. Herod Archelaus, Archelaus ruled Judea until AD 6, but only as an ethnarch. Like Matthew 2.22, Luke might have misdescribed him as king, but like Matthew, he would have called him Archelaus or Herod Archelaus. Now the the answer here is they're going back and forth in the blue. You have confused something here. Both Luke one five and two two both refer to King Herod the Great. Three one refers to Antipas. No problem so far. Back and forth at one five, the Herod must be the great King Herod, just as Matthew's Gospel describes. In Matthew, the Nativity coincides with the great Herod massacre of the innocents, Bethlehem whose death is a reason for their re the return from the flight into Egypt. Correct. So they're kind of, these two historians are going back and forth. So Luke's gospel therefore assumes that King Herod and the governor Quirinius were ten contemporaries, but they were separated by over ten years or more. The incoherent dating is only the start of the problem. And Blue Writing says, I think I've already explained this above, which we did in, in uh, the first section. Also, it is worth noting that we have an MS that describes a soldier who was legate of Syria twice during this time frame. There are two main interpretations of this MS manuscript. One is that it refers to Q, Q Varius, placing Quirinius as a procurator during the birth of Christ, and the other that it refers to Quirinius himself. The first option is defended by Ernest Martin in his is a historical record. Okay. No. Okay, that's Chronos, Caius, Christos, Nativity and Chronological Studies. Okay. We got footnotes here. A Latin inscription found in seventeen sixty four about one half mile south of the ancient villa villa of Quintilius Varus at Tivoli, twenty miles east of Rome states that the subject of the inscription had twice been governor of Syria. There you go. This can only refer to Quintilius Varus, who was Syrian governor at two different times. Numismatic evidence stamps shows he reruled Syria from 6 to 4 BC, and other historical evidence indicates that Varus was again governor from 2 BC to AD. AD 1. Between his two governorships was Sentius Saturnia, Aeneas, whose tenure lasted from 4, B, 4 to 2 B.C. Significantly, Tertullian, the 3rd century, said the imperial records showed that censuses were conducted in Judea during the time of Sentius Saturninius. Tertullian also placed the birth of Jesus in 3 or 2 B.C. This is precisely when Saturninius would have been governor, according to my new interpretation. That the Gospel of Luke says Quirinius was governor of Syria was when the census was taken is resolved by Justin Martyr's statement, second century, that Quirinius was only a procurator, not governor of the province. In other words, he was simply an assistant to Saturninus, who was the actual governor, as Tertullian stated. So we're kind of resolving this thing, going back and forth. The inscription in question is a fragment of a fu funeral stone discovered in Tivoli near Rome in 1764. I guess there's the picture of it below, yeah. And is now displayed in the Vatican Museum. We know only that it was set up after the death of August Augustus in 14 AD, since it refers to him as divine. 
The actual content of the inscription is as follows. 